the lady coming onto the stage right now is, is, is she's spoken to thousands and thousands of people. She's an activist. She really leaves little to no introduction. I'll have to give her a hand on stage, but while I do that, please give her a loud clap and please welcome to the stage, Allison Merton. All right. First of all, I want to say hello to Roto. Here we are today in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, celebrating the event recognized around the world in this day over 230 cities, the Global Marijuana March, and in this city, the Toronto Freedom Festival. All right. I would especially like to thank Blaine from Human for asking for Leap's presence today. Let's give Blaine a big round of applause. All right, Blaine! Woo! Wow. This day symbolizes more than cannabis. This day celebrates the change from the ugly hold of prohibition to full regulated legalization of cannabis. All right. This day symbolizes change and freedom. I'm here to speak on behalf of LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition as an invited guest today. For those who don't know me, my name is Allison Murden, and I am one of the millions of people around the world who are caught up in the war on drugs. Not only is this war infringing on our right to choose our medication, but it is also affecting people's choice to socially imbibe. Instead of choosing one of the most volatile and harmful substances known, such as alcohol, many people prefer a less destructive form of intoxicant, such as cannabis. I have been directly touched by this war, hence my reason for speaking on LEAP's behalf today. I am one of the most vocal, most persistent, and most dedicated activists in Canada. And I am here to make a difference. I encourage all of you to do the same. LEAP's message is that the war on drugs is a failed effort. LEAP's mission statement is to legalize and regulate all drugs because they are far too dangerous to be left in the hands of our children. Quote, after four decades of fighting the war on drugs, at a cost of over half a trillion dollars, and after arresting nine million nonviolent drug offenders in the last six years, after quadrupling the U.S. prison population to 2.2 million inmates, today's drugs are cheaper, easier to get, and far more potent than they were at the start of the night, this war in the 1970s. This is a failed drug policy. All drugs should not be left in the hands of the street and market and or for our children to be lured by so-called easy money. If we don't change the current regime now, the end result will be the same direction of the failed policies of the United States. With more and more prisons being built to house nonviolent drug offenders and more police to enforce these twisted laws, the consequences will be that our taxpayers' monies are being grossly misspent. If we are to change the current and foreseen situation, we have to revamp our entire perspective on this failed war on drugs, and this brings us back to LEAP's mission statement, to legalize and regulate all drugs. LEAP consists of present and retired law enforcement officers around the world who believe and know that the war on drugs is not working and that some climactic change must occur in order for that change to be stable. After nearly four decades of fueling the U.S. policy of a war on drugs with more arrests per capita than any country in the world, therefore accumulating in 4.6% of the population of the world, but 22.5% of the world's prisoners. This madness must cease. The members of LEAP have created a powerful drug reform group. The membership believes that to save lives and lower the rates of drug, death, disease, death and addiction, 
we must end drug prohibition. LEAP believes a system of regulation and control is far more effective than one of prohibition, and I'm honored to be speaking on their behalf today. I was first approached by founding member Jack Cole in the summer of 2004 to be a speaker for this organization. Jack had seen the work I'd been doing across Canada, he said, and was delighted to have another law enforcement officer on board. I was thrilled to have a U.S.-based drug reform organization behind me. That was three years ago. With over 20 published letters to national and international news entities and over 1,000 interviews in the past eight years under my belt, including radio and web media, I believe I know the futile war on drugs. What I have not mentioned and which many of you know is that I am one of the most vulnerable people in the country because I am sick and carry a license to possess and use cannabis to feel better. I battle my health every day as I live with chronic progressive multiple sclerosis, which I've had for the past 30 years. I know debilitation. Because of MS, I know tough times and tribulations too. Because of my license to possess cannabis, I also know prohibition well. The saddest part of this war on drugs is that the wrong people are in charge. Our children should not be tempted by the longings of a shiny new car or a stereo they could not otherwise afford. The illegality of drugs has made this fight much more pervasive because the exorbitant cost makes for a lucrative business. The lure of fast money means more business and keeps our children coming back. We need to attempt to eliminate all causes of violent crime related to this financially rewarding trade by adopting new policies seeking to remove the tremendous profit from drug dealing and underworld street market narcotics distribution. We also have to reject the notion that law enforcement off efforts can eliminate drug use in our society. Quote, drugs have been around for millennia and will remain so. To try to eliminate them completely is unrealistic, end quote. 